Well, just when you thought the violence was done spreading from Tunisia to Egypt to Yemen to Libya, now there are rising tensions between Israel and Palestine. After about two years of quiet and relative peace between these two countries, violence has once again erupted, with Palestinian militants firing rockets into southern Israel and Israel responding with airstrikes in Gaza. So here's a question. What happens if this violence escalates? The U.S. would have to get involved, right? Well, you may have thought we were already spread a little too thin, engaged in Libya, Iraq, Afghanistan. And let's not forget those behind-the-scenes things that we're doing in Yemen and Pakistan. But let's think about this. This country, in many ways, is the closest friend of the U.S. After all, Sarah Palin's there, and most presidential candidates make it an important stop on their campaign trail. AIPAC is one of the most powerful lobbies in this country. There is little doubt that the U.S. would have to help. So the question here is, could this be the start of World War III? Earlier I spoke with Nor Norman Finkelstein from our New York studio. Norman is an activist and author of This Time We Went Too Far. Here's part of that conversation. Uh, I don't think it's going to escalate into anything significant. Uh, Hamas, just before the Israeli attack, which killed, uh, I guess the numbers are around 19, 17 or 19 Palestinians. Hamas had been calling for a ceasefire. And I think the greatest likelihood is that there will be some sort of uh, settling down of the conflict uh, because the United States right now will not want a new conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. And they'll communicate their desires uh, to Mr. Netanyahu. And Mr. Netanyahu will defer to the American opinion on this one. So I don't think it's going to go very far. Um, All right. Israelis have, you know, well, I Israelis have many problems right now. And I don't think they want a new one with Hamas. But, I mean, why now? I mean, two years of relative quiet between the two countries. I mean, is this perhaps just the next region emboldened by what we've already seen in these other countries, in Egypt and Libya and even here in the United States, in Wisconsin, or is this something else? I, I know you say that you don't expect it to escalate, but there's something that triggered it. Uh, actually, I don't even now recall the particular cause and effect or a sequence of events that led to the current escalation, uh, because there are, for those who follow these things closely, there are Israeli attacks and uh, Hamas counterattacks fairly frequently. Uh, some of them make it into the news, some of them don't. Some of them escalate and some of them don't. In this case, there was an escalation and there was more media prominence. But this has been fairly regular. Uh, you could say every week there are reports of two or three Palestinians killed in Gaza, uh, but they just don't really make it into the news or there are attacks in the West Bank, which also don't make it into the news. But it's not as if this is a, uh, a major departure, aside from the escalation. But as I said, I don't think the escalation is going to lead to very much. Now you have to bear in mind that, as every one of your listeners knows and viewers knows, uh, there are major developments now in the Arab world. And the Israelis are uh, very concerned about where they're going. And they'll probably wait and watch to see where the du dust settles. But also, as you said a moment ago, they're going to be working very hard behind the scenes to try to get uh, some control over the unfolding of events. So Gaza is not really uppermost on their minds. I'm sure they're involved in what's going on in Egypt. They're involved in what's going on in Libya. Uh, they have quite a lot on their plate now. I don't so think you're not thinking that. Priority. I mean, you say uh, they're concerned about what's going on in Egypt. A lot of people, of course, asking the question, and you even read uh, some Israeli news reports that, you know, in which people uh, from the region believe that Egypt, whether it's tomorrow or next year, could be taken over, at least in part, by the Muslim Brotherhood. There's a lot uh, on Israel's plate right now in terms of what they're thinking about. Uh, you don't think that there's any way, I mean, you say that these attacks go on every now and again, but this one was somewhat significant. I mean, we saw a bus bomb, we saw an exchange, not just one or two, but several exchanges over the last two days between the two countries. Yeah, there has been an escalation. Uh, 
but I, I, you know, I could be wrong on these things. I'm no, uh, I'm no, I, no soothsayer, but I, I don't really think that that's where Israel's current investment of energy and time is. It's not in uh, Hamas. Uh, their main concerns are what's going on elsewhere. And you have to remember that you know, Israel is a small country, and like any country, it has a finite amount of resources. And its attention is going to be turned to the outcome in places which have not only a real impact on Israel, but also you have to remember that Israel also serves U.S. interests in the region. And the U.S. wants Israel to be focusing on places like Bahrain, uh, Yemen, uh, uh, certainly uh, Egypt, uh, and Libya. Well, and let's so just... given the... Let's speak mm -hmm. hypothetically, Norm, about this then, because you don't think it's going to escalate, mm -hmm. but that is a possibility. Yeah, no. Certainly in some people's minds, it's yeah. a, whether a small possibility or what. What happens if it does escalate? I mean, don't you think the U.S. would certainly have to get involved? Well, you know, I think there's a certain amount of confusion on exactly uh, <clears throat> when you say the U.S. has to get involved. Uh, I don't think it's altogether clear to many people what that exactly means. Let's, for example, look at the last BBC uh, uh, poll. The last BBC poll showed that about Americans are split right down the middle on Israel's impact in the world. 43% of Americans said Israel has basically a positive impact in the world. 41% said it has basically a negative impact in the world. So there's no overwhelming American support for Israel. That's simply a myth. Number two, if you look at the polls, they show that Americans say that if Israel is the victim, if Israel is the victim of Arab aggression, uh, of an Arab attack, even if they're the victim of an Arab attack, the polls show that Americans oppose Americans oppose. But Norm, I'm not talking about what the public wants. I'm talking about right. what the right. government will do. Right. Well, what the government will do will be, you know, uh, uh, and it'll be due to the power of the Israel lobby, but it's not going to be due to uh, the desires of the American people. That was Norman Finkelstein, a activist and author of the book This Time We Went Too Far Truth and Consequences of the Gaza Invasion.